Hi everyone. Welcome to the last and final video on fertilizer series for the year 2022. And I hope to bring your attention to new material related to the elements in these fertilizers and their interesting human friendly ways of usage in the year 2023 also. What is TE? When I asked this, anyone who knows fertilizer knows TE stands for trace elements. Then what are these exact trace elements noted after the nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium or the NPK ratio on a fertilizer label? And how do they help in plant nutrition. These are elements added by the tiniest amounts or traces of it into fertilizer. And even though in traces they are very crucial for overall health and nutrition of hoyas and orchids. These nutrient concentrations participate in helping diverse metabolic processes including primary and secondary metabolism to cell defense and from the signal transduction to the gene regulation, energy metabolism and hormone perception. Yeah, pretty big words but it's actually interesting if you read together a very dynamic idea of overall plant health. In my original fertilizer video, I have named these trace elements. But I did not go in depth into each of their functions which this video will deep dive individually into commonly heard and talked about four elements. Beforehand I would like to tell you that different types of fertilizers will include these trace elements in high and low compositions to suit the required function in the plant health. Therefore, be careful when you are choosing a fertilizer. For us general users, we do not have to hunt for a fertilizer which has high amounts of any trace element unless if you are already using what I'm gonna name next. Let's discuss about this when it comes to our favorite element of calcium. We frequently use CalMag. This happens to be a very crucial elixir in today's orchid growing. Now people even use this for indoor plant growing and Hoyas also. The main reason of that is it's a mix of as it said calcium and magnesium. But what is calcium? This is an alkaline earth metal and it's quite important in producing plant tissue. It is also key for a normal root system. But this is an immobile nutrient, meaning once you spray calcium onto a particular part of the plant, that part is not going to transport that element into the inside of the plant, which means the whole plant has to be sprayed. Calcium is provided using gypsum or calcium sulfate or lime which is calcium carbonate. Let's get to know magnesium. My mode of magnesium is the easily accessible Epsom salt. 
and magnesium is the sole magic that enables a good photosynthesis by capturing the sun's energy using chlorophyll. Like nitrogen, magnesium also provides the green color of a plant. Let's talk about boron. Boron is a component of plant health and reproductive structures. But this is a mobile nutrient and required in very small dosages compared to calcium and magnesium. And this is the second most widespread deficiency in plant health. Boron plays a key role in a diverse range of plant functions including cell wall formation movement of sugars or energy into growing parts of the plant. The deficiencies in boron may result in empty seed pods, leaf tip diebacks, stunted leaves, roots, flowers, seeds or fruits. Copper participates in a number of functions such as cell wall metabolism, energy transportation to cells and also acts as a chemical messenger and photosynthetic electron transport. Copper deficiency mainly affects the reproductive organs and younger leaves while its toxicity causes the necrosis, chlorosis, leaf discoloration and stunting inhibits the root growth. Apart from the detailed four trace elements, there are few others which are also included in a regular fertilizer. Namely, these are zinc, iron, calcium, nickel, iodine, molybdenum and selenium. This will also aid the plant in somewhat similar or same functions considering the duration of this video and at the risk of repeating myself I will not go into detailing the rest of the elements and although the attempt to understand the molecular mechanisms behind the transportation of trace elements has great importance in terms of basic plant sciences their deficiency and toxicity which can cause serious disease symptoms even the destruction of a plant if not properly treated therefore it is crucial to read extensively on the structural and functional roles of micronutrient transport in plant roots I'll end the video right here guys I think it has been enough time that you have been listening to me going on and on about trace elements and all of the sciencey words I have mentioned will provide you with more information if you search online. Thank you to everybody who have been listening up until the end of this video. Have a great day everyone. I love you all and thank you. Bye bye.